Welcome back to the finale of Yellow Jackets, the team huddle with Jace and Renee. And I'll tell you what, it feels good to be back. I missed a hell of an episode last week. You literally missed the worst. <laughs> Just like finally, you've been waiting for shit to go down all season in the past. What could they be more like nervous about people finding out compared to cannibalism? <laughs> and we finally got our answer. And I wasn't even able to watch it. Nope. <laughs> oh, man. But shout out to Avery for um, for filling, filling my yeah. spot. As always, she's great. And you guys had a grand old time, it, it sounded like. <laughs> it was very fun. But I'm glad you're back for the finale because... <sighs> we have a lot to talk about. Yeah. And as usual, uh, this is uh, everyone's spoiler warning. And also... We are not a uh, recap show, so we're going to be all over the place. Uh, there's That's a lot of great recaps out look. there. A lot of great recaps out there, just not here. Yeah, <laughs> no, it has to be chaos here. Yeah. So we are talking about the season two Yellow Jackets finale storytelling. But honestly, I think this episode maybe should have just been called the Walter episode. Walter, baby, MVP. Jesus Christ. Walter comes out and just lays his loaf on the table the whole episode. <laughs> like... He's just incredible scene after scene. Some of my favorite lines from maybe the entire show, like that rivaled book club. I was so <laughs> yeah. shocked. Like the way that he's like, I've always wanted to be a cop, but alas, I'm a lifelong asthmatic. <laughs> I was just like, I'm obsessed with his delivery, the way that he's written, everything about it. And he just... I need a spinoff show with Walter and Jeff really is what I need. Especially like Jeff's reactions to everything that Walter said was perfect. Yeah. Like Jeff, Jeff felt like he, he's seen it all with Shauna. And then Walter comes in. He's just like, uh, you finished your appetizer. Let's get to the main course. <laughs> yeah. It's like, this is like the male version of Misty now is what we have. And I'm just so happy about it. I gotta say, I thought Misty was, was really crazy and good at this stuff. Walter puts Misty to another. shame. Like yeah. the whole thing he orchestrated at the end. Incredible. Even the cop was like, wait, what? I'm not following. <laughs> I think everybody was like that. I saw people online all talking about it going, wait, so what did he do? <laughs> it's like, what? he just comes up out of nowhere, shoots the fucking cop, like grabs his gun and then shoots the cop in the trunk. Who's already dead, but we're just like, what? And then even the cop is like, I'm sorry, what? And he's like, basically, you can make a decision. You could say that you killed him as like a service because yeah. he was a bad cop. Or you could say you killed him because you're a bad cop. <laughs> <laughs> basically, there's two different ways. So I did love that. I thought it was very clever and a little bit sad still. I was hoping that porn stash would be the guy to go. You yeah. know, I thought I, I thought Kevin Tan dying like. R.I.P. Yeah, I was surprised when Kevin just collapsed. I was like, wait, what? He just killed him. I was abruptly. like, I hope. I was like, did he just drug him? And then I'm like, oh, my God, no. He used the phenobarbital. Like, he fucking killed him. And I was like, damn. That was intense. Although it was hilarious and worth it because of Jeff's reaction. When he's like, oh, my oh God. My God, what? <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, that was that was crazy. And that whole the the thing of him coming up behind the cop grabbing his gun and then shooting the the, the guy in the trunk i think that might be my favorite scene in the entire season that's like, just genius it came out of nowhere i was like whoa 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 yeah. <laughs> like he's playing back the guy's voice on the phone and he's like <laughs> he's panicking and like smiles and just throws the phone in the trunk like he knows exactly what's gonna happen it's just crazy <laughs> Well, and we're going to do a separate, you know, season three theory episode. But like the first thing that I'm thinking of is like, OK, Walter is too good at this. How is he involved from season one? Like he mm. he did something in season one. We just never saw it. <laughs> like, I wonder because he really I mean, I, he even tied in the Jessica Roberts thing. I was like, yeah. wow, he knows about that. huh? <laughs> like he must know everything. He's so wonderful i'm just i hope season three honestly starts with the sex scene with him and misty because he's earned it 
after well, this. He better get some good loving tonight. That sex scene has to start with them cleaning the room thoroughly before they that. even have yeah. sex. Well, naturally. <laughs> naturally. Oh, man. Well, <laughs> I also got to say, Yellow Jackets m- might just be one of the best shows for like doing opening scenes and choosing the music that goes with the opening scenes. Like, yes. Zombie was... <sighs> was great and then just so then good coming back carrying javi <laughs> it was fucking heartbreaking i was like oh shit we're starting right with the javi shit which was like i mean i knew that he was not gonna look good but like when they dropped his body down i was like damn he <laughs> yeah. does he looks really fucked like that was like avi popsicle javi that... popsicle i don't know why i said avi <laughs> <laughs> excuse me well i don't know if you noticed this but like I was watching the faces of the people carrying him back. And like the first face I saw was Van. Mm -hmm. She had like, she had like Carl Urban face, just like super intense stare. Like, you know what I mean? Carl Urban has a permanent intense stare. I'm thinking of, yeah, like from the boys. I'm thinking of like that really intense. Any movie that is his default face is that Mm -hmm. super intense furrowed brow stare yep. <laughs> like lord of the rings doom the boys that's just his face like, i agree i agree <laughs> that is and you know what it's interesting you brought that up just right away because I, one thing i was going to mention to you was like i don't think i've ever seen so many people turn their opinions around on a character as fast as everyone online has done about van mm. like i don't know if you've seen anything but as of like last episode and this episode people are like I fucking hate Van. She is the big bad. She's the real person that is the problem. She's the evil one. We all fucking hate that bitch. And I was like, wow. Wasn't she our favorite like three episodes ago? What happened? She she was all our favorite until we saw her on screen. Like, (laughs) I mean, literally, though, her faces have been terrifying. Between this and the hunt, like her face was really scary. So was Ty, though. Although we've seen her scary face for a long time, obviously. It, are people saying present van and both now both as of the finale they're now adding present day van but like exclusively from last episode people were like past van is fucked up and scary she's got the <laughs> evil look in her eye and she like like wants blood or something i don't know they're scared of her <laughs> this episode I think in the past, it was like her conversation with Travis, which is like right after they bring back Javi and like he's all fucked up from it. And she's like, he's like, you guys should feel like bad for this. And she's like, I don't. I'm not ashamed. Like we did this and you should too. It's like she was kind of fucked up what she was saying to him. Like your brother, you should honor him. He saved us like yeah. all this creepy shit. And then in the present, it did seem like she was manipulating Ty and things for the mm-hmm. the ritual and we'll get to that probably a little bit later but maybe i mean i don't i don't know the whole thing with her in the last couple episodes i've just haven't forgot that she's dying and so she, you know it, in my head it kind of makes sense that she's maybe a little little more rattly than everyone else because she's like i'm gonna die in a couple months so like let's play this out (laughs) that's what i'm saying i think okay it's good so yeah let's talk about because that was the thing is that people were like i feel like she was manipulating them so they could do the ritual hunt and that maybe that would cure her because she's dying Mm -hmm. and she's like was one of the strong believers so i'm like that makes sense that totally tracks but like they're like, I just don't like that she's like manipulating them. I'm like, well, I don't like that fucking Ty like cut our, her dog's head off and fucking yeah. still has that thing on an altar at her house. <laughs> yeah. Like that's fucked up. But we're all okay with Ty, right? I mean, she also tried to kill her wife, who's still in the hospital. <laughs> we're just so- like, nobody on the show is perfect, okay? To turn on Van so suddenly just feels like. I guess people were just feeling that they got a lot of malicious intent from this, from her in both timelines. And I just felt like, I don't know if I necessarily felt that maybe a little bit in the past, but not in the the present. Yeah. I don't know. Like Van's through line as an entire character is that she's really just jaded from everything. Mm -hmm. And so like, you know, everyone's saying like, Oh, um, Lottie is insane. She's crazy. It's like, we all went through the same thing. Like, 
we're all just dealing with it differently and you guys just don't want to deal with it. You want to blame Lottie. Everyone just is using her as a scapegoat, which is interesting because like, I think we all started this season assuming Lottie would be the big bad. Yeah. And that she was the evil one. Right. And she was the one who started everything. Like we've talked about in the last couple episodes that I always thought she was the one who would be like, let's fucking hunt each other and kill each other and sacrifice to the wilderness. But it was fucking Ty last episode and everybody else stepped up to say, yeah, let's do it, you Mm -hmm. know? And she was like so ashamed of that this episode that it really just showed like it's fucked up. Like when when Van as an adult was saying we did this to her, it's like, yet they did, though. I mean, (laughs) she's literally mentally ill and they played into it. Granted, at the time that they believed it. But like, I mean, it's I think it's just it's fucked up that everyone's turning on Van so quick. I'm like, I mean, Ty has a really long list of shit she's fucked up and done. That is not good. Shauna continues to want to peel skin off people. (laughs) I mean, I don't think that's going to change. Misty is just doing shit left and right. She's people all the time, okay? (laughs) She's killed multiple people. And she did keep Jessica in her basement for like a week. So... (laughs) You know, she's got a list of shit. Everybody does. It sounds like Lottie is the only one that really wasn't doing fucked up shit until they all showed up on her doorstep. (laughs) I think the most fucked up thing Lottie did was last week when she just, as you put it in last week's episode, just busted out suicide roulette. Yeah. Out of nowhere. That was a little (laughs) quick. I felt that was sketchy. Where did you have this ready to go? You guys have this as like a nightly activity? The the first thing, like when that when she just threw that idea out there, I just immediately thought, like, well, that escalated quickly. Like, <laughs> That's what I'm what? Like, oh, damn <laughs> shit. That fucking came out of nowhere. And plus in the last that like scene or something, it was her in the past going, it doesn't work like that. You can't bargain with it. And then the president she goes, I know, we have to give it what it wants. Let's one of us kill each other, <laughs> like kill ourselves without like knowing who's gonna die. Like, what? That was a little fast. So <laughs> It it makes sense. I've thought this girl is definitely off a rocker for a while and mm. that it wasn't some spiritual thing trying to do it. I mean, I guess another thing that she also kind of did was accidentally kill Travis. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was her mental illness. It wasn't the wilderness intervening. That was her having a vision at, at the worst possible time. Well, we we haven't gotten confirmation yet that she killed him, but I, You're right. from that, from the from... information we have, I think that's what we can assume. Again, I it could change, but Natalie sadly is not going to know about it, which sucks. Yeah, that is. Um, I was going to give Lottie a little bit of credit at the beginning of this episode, like she tries to drink the the stuff, and I was like, you know. Cult leaders are usually not the first people to try something out. But then I was like, wait a second. She knows which one is poison. So I was like, no, no, (laughs) no. I do love that. I I like that she's she was really gung ho about it. And they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. okay." And at first I was like, wait, why the fuck is Shauna going along with this? Does she really buy into this? And then I love that you're like, oh, no, Shauna's just like, yeah, totally. Let's do this. But like, we're just (laughs) buying time. It's sad because it's like it's so sad because it's like they've all gone through that. They know what she's going through. But mm. like, like you said, none of them want to actually deal with that. I I was I was I've been meaning to ask you, actually, um, to make sure that you're OK, because I know that you uh, you really loved Juliette Lewis and you loved Nat. I do love Nat. How, uh, how, are, how are you holding up? I kind of thought that this was coming weirdly that Nat was going to go. I think it was especially traumatizing for me because I love Misty as well. Mm -hmm. And the fact that Misty killed her on accident, but still was just like a fucking like extra kick in the pants. I don't think I needed because I was already like, fuck, I don't want Natalie to die. And I love Juliette Lewis. I love her character and like both timelines, obviously. And, but I kind of thought it made sense. I mean, she tried to kill herself at the end of last season, mm-hmm. you know, and this season she felt like she was maybe trying to, I don't know, deal with a lot of the stuff that happened to her. And I think by the end, she just realized that like, there's really no amount of therapy of any kind that could probably help these people mm-hmm. at this point. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's just sad because literally like when she actually dies, she's like i don't i'm not ready i don't i shouldn't be here and they're like no like you are it's okay but i was like 
uh, like I don't <laughs> want you to go, but like I get it for the story. It made sense. And I think the putting it at the same time as she's like being crowned the antler queen in the past, mm-hmm. which was a great twist that I never saw coming. I mean, yeah. they've made it where Natalie is kind of like, I mean, besides Shauna, I would say like Natalie was like the most like good person on the show that you could always rationalize what she was doing and like root for her. I mean, Sean is like also I don't, very. I don't know if Shauna is, is a no, good person. <laughs> no, but it's like you still like you still. I think maybe just because Melanie Linsky really just nails yeah. it, but you're yeah. like you're still on her side. Yeah. Right. Whereas like Natalie, it felt like she was like the good one, and that mm. she was fucked up the most. But like, it seemed like you know Lottie was the one who was like in charge of this whole cult. So to have it be Natalie. Is yeah. fascinating and makes it like, oh shit, are we gonna see shit about her now in the past that's gonna cloud how we view her in I mean again, I think what they're doing is perfect because now you can go back and rewatch season one and everything hits different. Yeah. Well, I think yeah, I think the way that they did it actually yes, yeah, I wasn't expecting it, but I think it's actually brilliant because they they essentially kind of lay adult Natalie as like the most unstable or the, like the most damaged and um and what has happened up to this point has been you know there's been some pretty bad things but now going forward with her leading the group if terrible things happen and she's the ult- ultimately the one responsible for these terrible things happening that makes a lot of sense as to where we meet her in the first season is like yeah. why she's so messed up. Like I'm interested because like we've always been rooting for Nad in both timelines and felt like it was very similar. But now we're like, it's going to be making it a little bit harder to probably root for her a little bit. Cause you're like, it was so beautiful though, because I love seeing that like, she's just been the one that like, I felt like besides obviously Jackie, but like Nat's kind of been on her own for a lot of things and like was always kind of the outcast of the group. So for mm-hmm. her to be like, and she's also been one of the most important people out there. Yeah. I thought that was cool for her to finally be accepted. And I do have to say, Lottie picked with the perfect time to just fucking nope out of there. And like, <laughs> yeah. oh, you know what? I actually think the wilderness is choosing Natalie. Like, I'm curious <laughs> if she did that because she really believes that. Or if she's also like, these bitches are way crazier than I thought. <laughs> I don't want to be the one in charge of them. I'm not comfortable with this. So I'm going to just fucking hand off responsibility to someone else. And I thought it was really smooth if that's what she was doing. I don't know. She's like, I just got fucking fight clubbed for all of you bitches. I'm I'm done. I'm O-U-T. Somebody yeah. else can take the next beating. Okay. This is a bit much. Okay. I never said to hunt the boy. <laughs> she literally was like, take coffee to the other room when they were like gonna beat the shit out of her when Shauna did. Yeah. So she was like, you know, let's protect him. And they're like, hey, so we ate him. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm sorry. Wait a minute. <laughs> what happened? Like she's just, I mean, I'm sure she's shocked and scared. I think that's part of it. Maybe she really believes in it at that point but i'm a little bit like i think i think she might just trying to be like you know maybe this is a good time for me to move out of this position yeah well and speaking of javi since we didn't get to talk last week thank god they finally answered the where javi's been and it's not some underground mine tunnel system it was a cave it's a fucking cave people (laughs) and people are still saying well we don't know how extensive these underground tunnels are and i'm like it's not a tunnel it's a fucking cave. That is all. That yes. is it. <laughs> the cave has something to do with the symbol. We yes. don't we still don't know who Javi's friend is, but it it's a cave. It's not At an elaborate. Point, yeah. Who, this are is we not a Truman out? show situation. Like Yes. <laughs> also, is Ben still in that tree to this day? We don't know. <laughs> I was gonna I was gonna tell you. Um if if for anyone listening, if you loved all the scenes of sad, lonely be- coach in a bed, get ready for season three because there's going to be a lot of sad, lonely coach in a cave. I wonder, <laughs> though, is there or are these bitches coming for him at the start of episode one? Because he's <laughs> he's got a huge fucking target on his back now. <laughs> kind of like obsessed with all of the memes with about Ben right now because it was just like. He just was like, fuck these kids. <laughs> They're done. They're dead to me. I'm, 
I'm going to burn this whole fucking place down. That was like the boldest move in the world. And I'm so shocked that it came from the one legged man who I've been <laughs> saying would die since episode one of season one when he got his leg chopped off. At this point, I fully believe Ben is alive. But where like, is he in? The, he has to I, be in the tree or like secretly alive. Because why haven't they brought him up? If he's they would. Made it, if he's made it this far, he's got to be alive. Like if he's alive, though, like why haven't they suspected him for anyone who would be fucking who would be sending them this shit to torment them and blackmail them years later? Besides fucking Ben, who was the judgmental one who burned their cabin down because they were eating each other. I'm just saying. It seems like that guy is either going to die immediately because like Nat must know close to where he is. Like they know the area. I'm sure Dark Ty will find him. Just well, give her a fucking couple nights to go out hunting. Well, Ben figured it out because of his great map skills, apparently. Whatever. So so Nat's the only one who knows that he's somewhere else. So, yeah, they have to figure it out. I'll. <laughs> My first thought with when they the house was lit on fire and i was like okay so ben definitely did it i, I mean like, we did see him outside with all the wood and the yeah. matches and everything and the rope <laughs> i was thinking suspicious. though i was like ben is such a petty little bitch i know like, he really is like i get it he thinks he's the hero but like i kind of feel like he's i mean it's insane that he's alive what the fuck is he eating yeah <laughs> is he eating anything Maybe he ate his shaved off beard. I and don't know. Here's my <laughs> biggest question is if he had succeeded and burned that place to the ground with all them in it, would he eat them then? Oh, no, because he has a moral standard, I'm sure. Well, then he would be dead in five minutes. <laughs> I mean, there's just no way he can live without food, right? Yeah, I mean, he's a real hypocrite. He doesn't even have a leg to stand on. <laughs> See what I did Literally, there? yeah. <laughs> Check how much in that in a uh, scary movie too. I was, I was thinking for it. <laughs> I was thinking. Um, I was thinking that Coach is a is a petty little bitch though, because I'm like, I don't even think he did it because he saw that they ate Javi. I'm like, I think he lit it on fire because no one, like no one, has said anything to him. In months, like, yeah, no, no one has asked how are you doing. I wouldn't want to know just from no, the look at him. No one even thought this entire episode. I wonder where Coach is. <laughs> like, You're like Coach Na is. <laughs> yeah. Nat Natalie's the only one that's like, "Where have you been?" But like, no one's else like, "Is Coach even alive still?" They're I think busy, they're all man. wondering. <laughs> They've all got other shit on their brains, and they're all obviously like feral as fuck. Mm -hmm. So the only time that they think about him will probably be. I'm hungry. I think I think Ben must be nearby. <laughs> it's like where the that guy can't get far. He's got to be laying low. And I was like, dude, this is pathetic. Like for it, when that before that scene when they showed him in the cave and he's like hitting those rocks together, I was like, oh Ben, you're gonna die out here, you <laughs> fucking idiot. Just go eat some hobby and shut up about it. But I, lo I love that was the entirety of that scene. It's just him <laughs> alone by himself trying fucking to start up. a fire. Because he was like, Nat, come with me. Like we can both survive. And it's like, oh, you mean that I can survive and do everything for you? <laughs> yeah. Right? I mean, there's no way that he's gonna be able to live and hunt out there. At least Javi. Yeah. If he's eating little animals, he could go fucking snap their necks. I mean, it'd be traumatizing, I'm sure, but like he could do it. Ben's gonna be fl falling down, crawling around. No offense to anyone who doesn't have a leg, but like maybe <laughs> you don't stand the best chance of surviving in the wilderness alone. Yeah, Javi <laughs> had a friend. Ben did not Supposedly. have a friend. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And we'll never know. <laughs> I'm sure we will find out eventually because they wouldn't just drop that unless they did and they're just like, fuck it. Who knows? Well, if we're all right in that in that sleepy tie is Javi's friend, then mm -hmm. sleepy tie knows where the cave is. Sleepy tie. That makes her sound like more mischievous, not as much of like I'm chopping dogs' heads off and like <laughs> yeah. crazy shit. <laughs> People do crazy things when they're tired. When they're but, sleepy. Uh, <laughs> I'm sleepy. Sorry. <laughs> uh, last week you said something about Ben being the three-eyed raven from Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. And then another Game of Thrones thing happened this week. And I'm like, are we switching from referencing Lost every week to now we're going to reference Game of Thrones? Because uh, Travis ate the heart. Yeah, he did pull a Khaleesi. He I was... pulled a Khaleesi. And I was like, 
So is that heart also a big gummy? Because was it wasn't the heart from Game of Thrones like a three pound gu- like giant gummy heart? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of this. It, I think it's like very similar to what they would do on like that Santa Clarita diet show because she was always eating like body parts, Drew mm-hmm. Barrymore, and she's like a vegan, and they like would make it from like vegan gummies or whatever which are like basically no horseshoes or whatever the fuck horse hooves horse hooves <laughs> uh <laughs> but whatever the fuck so yeah not from horseshoes that would kill you <laughs> I just realized what i said uh but yeah no uh i think it's like just a giant ass gummy but yeah i think just game of thrones really owns that sequence now that like if anyone ever eats a heart i'm like oh, game of thrones that was good <laughs> Khaleesi man that was some good shit oh my gosh um so speaking of Travis this is this is like an unintentional funny moment but I was watching <laughs> with the wife and that line early on when Lottie is like why was Travis screaming just immediately out loud I was like he stubbed his toe <laughs> <laughs> and she's just like oh my god <laughs> yeah that would be a bit much Oh. It was, uh, yeah, I was worried that they were going to, I was thinking that they were going to lie to, to Travis and tell him, I mean, mm-hmm. they didn't fully tell him cause Nat was like, it happened so fast, but it's mm-hmm. like fast enough that like you guys had time to go, no, let's wait until he's dead before we pull him out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? They didn't tell him the full thing, but I thought it was just pretty fucked up <laughs> and just really an intense way to start the episode and i mean they they did preview and tell us all like this episode's gonna be insane for everyone in both timelines and i agree i think uh i think it got that way i'm actually curious too to see like with nat being antler queen are they going to all accept it i mean they all like did their little like bow to her whatever thing but like they focused on like right before lottie said who the name of who she was talking about they literally focused on ty misty and shauna all like kind of being like oh like maybe it's me Mm -hmm. and misty especially just like really like she like smiled and was like oh my god like stood up like i can't believe someone thought of me (laughs) i was just curious like especially shauna i think she was writing about it in her little diary too and she was saying like you know i can't believe after everything i've done for them that they would you know think it was not me that deserves this or whatever yeah i thought it was interesting and i'm worried now like i know i i know we all know nat's okay like in that timeline but like i'm curious because we still have that theory of like changing antler queens so maybe that will be a thing yeah because it doesn't it doesn't sound like those three were going to be very happy about the fact that they weren't chosen (laughs) oh I am on full alert and hyped as can be for Shauna next season, past yeah. and present. Cause yes. like, yeah, the way it ended, I was like, Shauna is almost as bitter and petty as coach. Mm-hmm. She is angry that she is not the leader. She lost her baby. And also Shauna, Shauna is, she's like the, the, the meal prepper. Like, she's yeah. the one doing all the cutting. She's the and... one doing the hard shit that they don't have the stomach to do. Yeah. You know, she had to fucking cut Javi up and skin him and all that good stuff. Not good stuff, but you know <laughs> what I mean? And she was like, I mean, at this point, I'm sure that doesn't fucking phase her. But like, still, it was she does a lot. And you're right. I think that goes overlooked because like Nat was the one that was hunting with the gun. But also. They were fucking ready to hunt Nat last episode. Yeah. I was like, no one's even going to go, hey, should we talk about this? She's kind of important. Because I was like, her, Misty, like Shauna, I do feel like those three might be excluded. Yeah. <laughs> they, they all have important jobs, right? Yeah. Well, this may sound a little dark, but I want to know what Shauna's marinade was for that meat. Because it looked delicious when she brought it in. I don't think she was marinating it. <laughs> I don't think they have anything out there to marinate anything, unless it's blood. I don't know. That meat looked like it had a nice thing of olive oil on it. You know, maybe they got got some some herbs and spices that they <laughs> no. collected. No, as like... you can see, it was raw as fuck when she brought it in. <laughs> and he fucking, I was like, can you eat a raw heart? I mean, I guess you can, but like... You know, everyone else waited until it was cooked. <laughs> and then I was like, damn. Like, they they all just, like, were, I mean, it was very, 
it looked good, I will say, but <laughs> I don't think that it was marinated or I think it's just fucking bare bones meat, but that is like heaven to them at that moment. But so, yeah, I, I want to tell you what this is the ending that I was hoping for. And this is really my Shauna fear boners talking. Okay. Um, Sh- Shauna drew the queen and talked about that. I yeah. was like, they're not about to really hunt her, are they? Like, I felt like Melanie Linsky, which is like, wait, 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 wait. Time out, though. Like, are you guys really? We're not going to do this, right? I was hoping that Shauna, they were going to come at Shauna and Shauna was going to fight back. She was going to get the knife and then she was going to fuck up present time Lottie again, but then this time kill her Ooh. and then establish that she's the baddest bitch. <laughs> ever <laughs> i think the ending they did was better <laughs> yeah this is really just for my own vanity i wanted this. i don't think jeff could handle it if she had done something like that i think he i mean after last week i think his fear boner might be a little bit too much in the fear department for yeah. him to really get excited after that dream he had and him like looking at those fucking pictures with the cheese grinder and all that whatever uh she's greater but that yeah, what's been a cheese grinder? I don't know. <laughs> Something you put cheese in and grind it. I'm sorry, that doesn't make sense. I am all over the place, Jace. I've, I'm in an emotional place. Okay, this episode <laughs> just aired. Like I just watched it yesterday. It's a lot. I'm just, I'm feeling a lot of things. But I want to say, with that, I do. I think it was interesting. I do like the fact that they had Callie come out and yeah. like shoot Lottie. And I was like, oh, shit, like, is she going to kill her? And I have to, I love that that Lottie wasn't even phased by the fact that she had just gotten shot. She's like, that's your daughter? She's so powerful. It was like, what are you, like, obsessed with her? Like, get out of here, you weirdo. Yeah, that was one of my questions is, like, what was that response? Like, she's so interested in Callie. Like, like, And she was interested in that baby before it came out. Lottie's, or, like, the original baby in the wilderness. So, like, Lottie maybe now is, like, I mean, maybe she just wants whatever child comes out of fucking Shauna. Yeah. <laughs> She's got a thing for him. She's weirdly obsessed with them. But I just love that no response of like, oh, fuck, I've been shot. It was just like, oh, my God, that's your daughter. Like, I love her. I'm an adopter. It was like, what? What? I, during the, the part when Callie learned that she had a, a little brother. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love that. Th- this thing popped in my head of I think Callie is essentially like the avatar of anyone who's not watching Yellow Jackets live and we're talking to them as they watch it. Like they're they're like watching like, oh, my God, Melanie, uh, Shauna killed all these people. Like when she learns, it's like they're coming to talk to us like, yes, this happened. <laughs> You're just learning it delayed. We already yep. knew about this. <laughs> yeah, we've been here a while. We know all the shit. But yes, that is you're picking up some highlights, but but not everything. <laughs> uh, I also thought I wanted to ask you, it kind of looked like when they started drawing the cards that sleepy tie came out a hundred percent i agree you thought so yes i believe that was the re like there's i mean it's just this little smile i think that she gets and i'm like there she is yeah <laughs> there she is like it's this creepy ass smile and it's weird that both actresses nail it because like yeah. last episode i noticed that like when she saw the other tie not even just in the reflection when she turned around she was right there and she had that smile i was like well that's not good she's probably going to be that tie for the rest of the episode and i was yeah. right and this episode i'm like yeah i can just you can sense it they're really good at like that tiny little change and you're like oh shit and it's almost kind of like they all went through that change once they put on the masks mm-hmm. it was like i was like why aren't any of them answering her like i think we were all as scared as melanie linsky like yeah. or as you know shauna in that moment it's supposed to be because you're like Wait, the, they're not really going to do this. And I'm like, why are they all just staring at her like fucking freaks? Why do they all seriously have weapons that aren't dull, like that they secretly brought? Like, I don't like this. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It well, was scary. That, that scene also, they introduced something that is going to be a question that I need answered next season when she said, you know what happens if you refuse to draw? 
I noticed that too. That's going to be a fun thing to explore. So who refuses? And do they well, just chop their heads off? Like, what do they do? Well, I was thinking, I was like, they can't, the the answer to that can't just be that you're then the one we we hunt because maybe they banish you because then everyone would just draw a card like it's like you either have a chance to not die or you're gonna die um good point so yeah i'm wondering like what is the punishment for not participating banishment, banishment torture i don't know if they're imprisonment gonna i that don't know I don't know. Maybe you're on poop bucket duty for the rest of your life. <laughs> that would be pretty bad. And you can't sleep with us. You can't sit with us like mean girls. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because there is a little bit of that, too. Like, like all of them, like if there's any jealousy over who's the antler queen, it's like, you know, that is a very teenage thing. But it like totally would happen because they're all teenage girls. <laughs> like, yeah. like, oh, I want to be the queen. But it's like. I don't know if it's necessarily the position that anybody should want, honestly, <laughs> yeah. after this. I mean, granted, none of the choices look great. I'd probably feel safest as Misty because she's like, I don't need to be the figurehead. I can be the one pulling all the strings in the background. <laughs> Very true. And not be the target because that's, I mean, she's basically the start of the cannibalism. If you think about it that way, <laughs> yeah. she's like, Lottie's very happy with our decision. <laughs> yeah. or with the wilderness's choice or whatever it's like she didn't say that <laughs> misty's been great the last two episodes because we really learn her motivation and her motivation is just to keep the status quo like you had like you said like she's not a figurehead last week you're saying like she knows that if she branched off no one would follow her yeah so she she's has to make just, it look like someone else's idea she's doing everything she can to just keep the status quo she destroyed the bl the black box she's so a faithful acolyte she she will find the figurehead and be their like you know little follower in number one which makes sense now thinking back like i just started rewatch of season one after the finale and i'm like it totally explains a lot of like why misty is so obsessed with natalie in season one as adults because like that was a big question i think we've talked about where it's like I never like you don't get a lot of their friendship in the past so far and like they don't interact that much. So it was always interesting to me that like Misty was like, Natalie's my best friend. But it's yeah. like, oh, yeah, because she was the antler queen. So no shit. Yeah. <laughs> of course, you're obsessed with her. That makes sense. She was your like you're her little faithful acolyte. Well, I think if there's anything we've learned this season, the position you don't want, it's, it's not the antler queen. There's argument that you do want that. No one should want to be Misty's best friend because Misty just ends up killing them on accident. That is true. That's two for two. I'm a little worried for Walter, but I think he's smarter than the rest of them. You know, I don't think he'll ever underestimate Misty. Whereas <laughs> I do feel and then with Natalie's, it was more of a choice. Like she saw it coming and it was kind of beautiful that like she was able to take the place and not like take another person and like bring them like down literally to death with their shit, you know, like she mm -hmm. saved Lisa, which like, I think we all would have been fine if Lisa was sacrificed. She doesn't need to be around, <laughs> but I think it was beautiful that Nat was finally able to like write that wrong of hobby yeah. dying instead of her. I think that's like, I mean, obviously we'll probably see what other guilt she has from like the next season, seeing what happens now that they are like even more desperate than they already have been. Because they have no fucking shelter. Yeah. I mean, this is going to be how they start building their little society that we I, see with Pit Girl. Yeah, I'm really glad that they destroyed the cabin. Because... That was good. Because, yeah, like, it, it, it forces next season to be very different. You know, well, it's, yeah. it's, it's not going to be like The Walking Dead where it's just like, oh, we just, we're going to stay in this one place for the entire... <laughs> series <laughs> like, i mean they go to different places but eventually it's just the same thing every different place it's the uh, same story every season just a different location you're like wow <laughs> so different whereas this i was like yes this ups the stakes in a nice way mm. it's not such an annoying cliffhanger that we're all like ah like i mm. need information right now like i definitely would love it but it, it's fascinating because like literally like after javi is gone and now Ben is not with them. I mean, he's still alive. He's with us, but he's not with them. Mm -hmm. And then the fact that there's no, like, fucking cabin, which was their last, like, what, connection to civilization. 
the innocent people in their group are not with them. It's about mm-hmm. to get 10 times worse than it already is. Oh, I already have some thoughts and some ideas for our next season theory episode, but we'll save those. Yeah, we'll we'll do something like that next week because we're not ready to fucking let go yet. I, oh, yeah. I, I'm not ready to say goodbye. I can't <laughs> wait. And the writer's strike, I support it 100%. Give the writers all the money but especially so that we can get Yellow Jackets season three in a timely manner, because I can't, I can't wait more than three years. Come on, you filthy rich people. Just throw, throw some change at at everyone else. Between that, the writer strike and Max being a thing now, I'm just very upset with the people (laughs) on top of this industry. They are ruining it. What a spectrum. The writer strikes and HBO Max just being Max. We're, it's what just are we Max doing? now. It, it's a whole separate app. I don't know if you've been on there. You have to I, download something different. It's bullshit. <laughs> well, I I think the appropriate way to wrap up this season is this last episode had two amazing Jeff lines. Yes. <laughs> Amongst uh, many that have he's... accumulated. <laughs> When he's explaining what them running, going on the run looks like, and he says, we can't Google ourselves. And then Callie's like, how often are you Googling yourself? You Google yourself a lot. And then the fact that he's like, we can't go to our favorite takeout places. <laughs> like, And it's like, these are the big concerns for him. I love that she's like, that's what you're bothered with, with yeah. going on the run. Those are the two inconveniences. Oh, and then the, the other one is... <laughs> He's talking to Cal and he's like, the American family is crumbling. You try making a living off sectionals. Because <laughs> she's like giving him shit. I was all, I loved Callie this episode with Jeff. I was surprised by, by, by like, I just loved how much shit she was giving him. Because she's like, you're being awfully judgy about mom when <laughs> you're the one that started all this with your shitty little blackmail. <laughs> I, th- I think Callie might be the biggest winner of this season because in the first season, she sucks. Everyone yeah. hates her. And then this season, she really just became one of my favorites. I- she <laughs> had the potential to go all the way and become one of the most hated characters for like in TV history, which is always like a main character's child. I don't know if you've noticed this, but it tends to be that way where their children, whoever it is on a show, like sometimes it's just their kid that's the fucking worst. <laughs> I'm thinking about that kid from Nip Talk, Matt or whatever. I don't even <laughs> He's the worst character in history, and he's the son of, like, the main doctor. So I'm just saying, I think there's a trend. Thank God Callie saved it. I think her character is, like, a now a mini Shauna, and I'm excited to see what darkness has planned for her, because I have a feeling she's ready to go there. <laughs> the wilderness has chosen, and yes. we're here for it. Yes. So, well, the season may be done, but we are not. So join us n- next week uh, when we just talk about some other stuff that happened this season. You know, we've got some ideas to talk about theories. We maybe want to do season two awards for some yeah. things. So just join us. We're just going to have a good time with it. We're going to drag this thing out. <laughs> okay, everybody. So send us your theories. We'll have more to talk about. There we go. Well, until then, we'll see you next time on the Yellow Jackets Team Huddle. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We out here.